video takes you through the process of calculating metal EDTA titration curves. So we're going to begin by uh, defining the, the acid-base chemistry of EDTA. So cells uh, B3 through B8 are the pKa's for EDTA. Cells C3 through C8 are the equilibrium constants for each of the acid associations of EDTA. And we're going to begin by defining the pH of our titration. In this case, it's 9. Uh, we can then compute the proton concentration. Uh, the denominator for the EDTA uh, proton um, dissociation calculation. And then finally, alpha Y4 minus, which is the fractional form of the fully dissociated EDTA. So this is nothing new. Uh, new. We, we covered this in detail in the last uh, post. What's different is that we're going to now form a complex between EDTA and a metal. Um, so I'm going to um, list the log K for the metal. And it's a log K, not a PK. So this is the formation constant. And the anti-log of that is uh, 10 raised to the, to the log K. So these binding constants are large, 10 to the 18, and the K uh, is 6.3 times 10 to the 18. Now the um, Kf prime in this case is the conditional binding constant, and the conditional binding constant is modified by two factors. One is the fraction of EDTA that's uh, in the fully dissociated form, so that's going to be about 5% about in this case. And the second term is going to be the fraction of copper uh, that is in the free form. And I'm going to use ammonia as my buffer in this problem. And ammonia forms copper amine complexes. Um, I've listed uh, beta 1 and beta 2 here. Um, and I'm going to start off with the total ammonia concentration being 0. Now that's ridiculous because I buffered my solution to pH 9 and we commonly buffer using ammonia. But to make things easier, I'm going to start with assuming that the ammonia concentration is at least low or small, and so that all of the free copper that's not bound by EDTA is, in fact, copper 2 plus. And we'll come back and clean up that assumption at the end of the video. So my Kf, then, is equal to uh, Kf prime is equal to B14, the formation constant, times D11, which is the correction for the EDTA side reaction and uh, K, uh, looks like it's 38, um, which, K37 rather, which is the copper amine side reaction coefficient. And as I just discussed, that is currently equal to 1. All right. Now, <clears throat> based on the way I set up this problem, um, I can also calculate a, a KD. And a KD is simply the reciprocal of the KF. Um, and so if the K dissociation is small, 2.9 times 10 to the minus 8. OK, so now we're going to start with uh, an, an EDTA titration of the metal. My initial volume is 100 mils. My total metal concentration, in this case copper, is 0.01 molar. Um, and therefore, uh, excuse me, the EDTA concentration is uh, 0.05 molar. The copper EDTA stoichiometry is 1 to 1, and so the equivalence volume in this titration is 20 mils. And the panel down here shows you what that titration volume will look, uh, curve will look like. I've got titration volume on the x-axis and p-metal on the y-axis. So this is the negative log of the free metal concentration. If I start with uh, 0.01 uh, molar metal, then the p-metal will be 2. And so this part of the titration curve is where the metal is in excess. We haven't added enough EDTA to titrate all of the copper. And so the p-metal values are low because the metal concentrations are high. At 20 mils, we're at the equivalence volume of the titration, and we can calculate the uh, metal concentration as the square root of the total metal to EDTA complex um, times its uh, KD. And then after 
20 mils, we have excess EDTA in the system, so the free EDTA is, is computed at, from the excess EDTA minus the, um, or the total EDTA minus the copper concentration, and from that and the copper EDTA concentration, we can calculate uh, free copper. So that's using the partitioned approach that's clearly described in Harris and that we've talked about in class. For this spreadsheet, I've uh, taken a, a little bit more of an elaborate approach to uh, allow us to calculate this curve um, at any uh, condition. And so to do that, I've resorted to our standard mass balance uh, approach. The mass balance I'm going to use is the total EDTA is equal to Y, the um, form not complex by the metal, plus MY, the form that is complex by the metal. And I'm going to fix my typo here. <clears throat> Second mass balance is that total metal is equal to the free copper, and that would be copper um, that's either complex by um, ammonia or free, and MY, um, which would be the copper EDTA complex. So the equilibrium constant is that Kf is My over M and Y. Um, again, I'm going to uh, use Kf prime to correct for the side reaction coefficients. And then uh, the approach I'm going to use is to solve for M, solve for the free metal concentration. And to do that, I'm going to uh, reorganize the first expression to get an exp uh, a value for My. My is um, uh, total metal. Um, uh, minus the metal, and so that could be substituted right into the numerator, and then y is equal to total y minus my, so here we go, that's uh, from this mass balance expression, and then I'm going to use my first, my expression for my substituted in, so into, for my here, and so y is equal to total metal minus total y plus m, and that y is going in there, and now I have an expression for the kf, defined in terms of total metal, total Y, and M. So you could do the algebra for this. You're going to end up with a quadratic equation. That quadratic, uh, quadratic expression is going to give us an A term, a B term, and a C term. And I've set my spreadsheet up in the following way. I've got volume of the titrant increasing upwards. I've got my total metal concentration. Now, my total metal concentration will change with dilution. So notice the numerator here is the moles of metal, B19 times its initial, the initial volume, divided by the total volume. So this is a dilution-corrected total metal concentration. Total EDTA works the same way. The total EDTA is the total moles of EDTA divided by the volume. So I've again corrected for dilution. A is 1, so that comes out of the solution to the quadratic. Again, you can uh, work out the algebra to get the quadratic. B, the B term in the quadratic is equal to B17. B17 is the KD, so that's why I use the KD um, in this spreadsheet. Well, you could certainly just use 1 over KF prime if you want to. Minus B23, B23 is the total metal concentration plus C23, which is the total EDTA. And the C term is equal to uh, B23, the total metal concentration, um, negative B23 times uh, the KD, or if you want to, 1 over KF. So that's it. Uh, I've got my A term, my B term, my C term. These are valid at all volumes. Uh, I'll then uh, solve the quadratic, negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, and let's see, what's that k37 doing? Oh, that k37 is the alpha for copper. So since I'm interested in the free metal concentration, I'm going to calculate the metal, um, the copper in this case. Uh, this expression gives me the copper plus copper amine complexes. So multiplying that by the alpha for the copper amine would actually give me the free metal concentration. Now, since I set that to 1, um, those two are equivalent. And last but not least, I've got the P-metal. 
and the p-metal is like the pH. It's the negative log of the metal concentration, and all of these rows are then filled down, and that gives us the titration curve. So this is an example of a titration curve for a copper EDTA titration, and of course I can change you know, this value if I, if I go from 100 mils initial to, uh, well, let's say 200 mils, um, then we expect this titrant volume to go from 20 out to 40. And sure enough, there it goes. And we'll send it back. Okay, so let's go deal with the uh, mean side reaction. Let's set the, the, uh, the copper <coughs> ammonia, let's set this side reaction uh, calculation into play. I'm going to use an ammonia concentration of 0.01. That's not unreasonable for a uh, buffer. All right, so there's my total ammonia, 0.01. The pH is the same as the pH up here because it's the same solution. So let's make sure those two are the same. I get my H plus concentration. I've got the pKa for ammonia. Um, and remember that ammonia is a weak acid, is a weak base. It will uh, undergo protonation. So um, if I have 0.01 molar NH3, I really only have a 3 millimolar NH3. 0.01 molar total ammonia only gives me 3.5 millimolar NH3. I've got two side reaction coefficients. These come out of the back of the book. Um, this is the first uh, reaction of copper with ammonia, and this is the copper plus two ammonias to form the copper bis uh, mean complex. The alpha then follows the uh, expected uh, format. It's 1 over 1 plus beta 1 uh, ammonia plus beta 2 ammonia squared. So we've already covered this in, in past discussions. And it says that the, um, the fraction of uh, free copper in a 0.01 solution is 0.4%, uh, so it's low. So let's go back and, and set the concentration to zero, right? There my alpha is one. We can set it to 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Now it's down to 0.4%, and let's make it 50 millimolar, probably a more realistic buffer concentration. And now we're down to, uh, what, 0.01%. And you can see the impact it has on our titration. Initially, we started with a, a p-metal of around 2. And we've now moved the p-metal up to 6. Um, we haven't changed this part of the titration, because at this point, the excess EDTA dominates the speciation. But we have changed the uh, fractionation down here. And so uh, coppers, um, the titration curve would still give us a nice break. If we were going to use a metal indicator to follow the titration, but we've gone from, again, a free metal concentration of 10 to the minus 2 to a free metal concentration of 10 to the minus 6 due to this alpha of 10 to the minus 4. And let's go back and, and uh, do a little bit of sensitivity analysis. Zero. Again, if I put my cursor here and I hit return, it goes down. And if I put my cursor here, no impact on the uh, post-equivalence free metal concentration, but a significant impact at the pre-equivalence metal concentration. And that is an example of a metal EDTA titration curve where the buffer provides um, not only pH control, but can also stabilize the metal before the equivalence point titration of the EDTA metal system.